I got hit right here. Oh! Huh? Covering Diddy's crimes. J-Lo's suspicious involvement. Patrick CC, let's get it. Sean Diddy Combs is currently sitting behind bars as the federal government continues to collect evidence related to his decades of reprehensible crimes. Racketeering, human trafficking, violent assault, bribery are just a few of the countless offenses Diddy is being investigated for. Yes, However, crimes crazy. at this scale are typically not a one-man operation. So you the know, feds start to question son, who could bro. have been involved Golly. in, assisting with, or covering up his crimes. Jennifer Lopez has been a point of interest as she was in a relationship with the disgraced music mogul from 1999 to 2001, I during which she was that. involved in a nightclub shooting that led to a victim being shot in the face and one man being imprisoned. The details of this case are very messy, and there are I... multiple strong sources that suggest Diddy was actually the one who fired the gun at the victim's face. But as always, he got away without even a slap on the wrist. Today, we are going to deep dive into JLo's suspicious involvement with Diddy and on That's a crazy picture, bro. Today we are going to deep dive into JLo's suspicious involvement picture, with Diddy bro. and unveil all of the details about that naked on him. night she does good, not Mr. want you to know. JLo made it very clear that the first time she met Diddy, she did not like him. He was larger than life, but at first I, I didn't like him at all. You know, I didn't. I thought he was like you know. But yeah, but JLo be lying sometimes, bro. <laughs> now it's normal for first impressions to be a little off, but I find it she interesting lying, that she yo. used the word ick to describe how she felt meeting him. That implies that she was disgusted or grossed out by him for some reason. However, she goes on to say that it's just because they had different views. Sean and I were very different that way. You know, I was very like family oriented and a, kind of a, you know, the married you know, I was actually when we first worked together on the video I was married even though I was going through problems nobody knew that you know what I mean and I you know I wanted my family and even though at that time it was not going well you know what I mean that was who I was so JLo seek Diddy Despite because she Jennifer was having problems like in her, her marriage and Puffy had different relations you know what's funny bro JLo <laughs> JLo was given. I don't remember where I saw it, but she was giving like later, relationship they advice. Or something. They were like, bro, you've been divorced Over like Over the years, JLo has been accused of getting in relationships <laughs> or even marrying men to advance her career. And based on circumstance, that allegation holds a little bit of weight when it comes to Diddy. Firstly, when Fact. they got together, JLo was gearing up for the release of her debut album, On the Six, in 1999. But she needed a ton of help. You see, JLo was now 30 years old and was trying to prove herself. Jayla was 30 in 1999. <laughs> as a musician, she had already proven herself in the industry as a dancer. She danced alongside MC Hammer in an episode of Yo MTV Raps, and then earned a job as a backup dancer for New Kids on the Block's performance at the 1991 American Music Awards. But her big break happened when she got a spot as a member of the Fly Girls, which was a dance group on the widely popular sketch comedy in show Living In Color. Living Color. But just being a dancer was far from the illustrious career she saw herself having. From there, she hired producer Eric Gold as her manager, where she was able to break into acting in Hollywood productions. Her first acting role was on the television show South Central, which was a comedy drama sitcom that aired on Fox in 1994. <laughs> From there, she got more TV roles in Central. Second Chances and Hotel Malibu, which transitioned to movie roles in Mi Familia, Money Train, and Jack alongside the legendary comedian Robin Williams. Now, I don't know However, her breakout take. film was Selena, a biopic about Selena Quintanilla Perez, the queen of Tejano music, which is a genre blending Mexican music with elements of American country and jazz. Lopez made headlines as the first Latina actress to earn $1 million for a film. Not only did this cement her place in Hollywood, but it also earned her a Golden Globe nomination, making her a draw for future work. And despite her acting career about to take off like a rocket ship, she didn't want to be an actress. She wanted to be a musician. That's what I was about to say. I don't know if this is a hot take, but Jennifer Lopez is a way better actor or actress than, than a singer, bro. I don't care what anyone says, bro. Embracing she's, her Latin roots, Lopez recorded a, a, a music actress, demo bro. in Spanish, which sparked a bidding war singer, among so record much. labels. And Plus, ultimately, she, she signed with Sony Music Group. The deal with Sony was described as lucrative, as they outbid major labels like Capitol Records and EMI Latin. As Lopez worked on her debut album, Sony launched a major campaign to promote her, leading to her appearance in 
Diddy's music video for Been Around the World in 1997. At that time, Diddy was an extremely powerful and popular music industry executive. He single-handedly developed Daddy. and marketed the Notorious B.I.G. to hip-hop superstardom. His label, Bad Boy Entertainment, was an absolute powerhouse, signing Bad some boy. of the most successful Biggie. artists of the late 90s. He Sorry. had personally won two Grammy Awards in 1998, and he was known I to like throw Biggie, some by of the way. most lavish parties where countless powerful figures in the entertainment industry would attend. Being Diddy's girlfriend was quite literally a golden ticket to superstardom, especially in the music industry. It's also convenient that Diddy's label was owned by Epic Records, which was also owned by Sony, the same label that signed Jennifer Lopez. This Plus, Diddy was known to introduce and mentor new artists in the industry, such as Mary J. Blige, Usher, and Justin Bieber. And when J.Lo talks Justin about her Bieber relationship thing. with Diddy in retrospect, it sounds like she's talking about an old manager rather than an old lover. He was great. During, it was almost like we I was meant to meet him while I was making my first album um, because he helped me a lot. He was kind of like a mentor in a way. Um, not a mentor, but like guided me. But he had also, a way of communicating that would it That's not how you talk me, about like, past love. Sucks. Don't do that. Or you need to do this. Or you need to do that. Don't forget. Like, And I was smart enough to sponge up the things that were useful. So when you factor in J-Lo getting the ick when she first met Diddy <laughs> to really then essentially signing <laughs> to the same label while she's trying to prove herself in the music industry, it makes it seem like this was not love, this was business. Diddy, who at the time went by Puff Daddy or Puffy, was at the Puff peak Daddy. of his career, and Puffy. he had just recently got away with multiple Puffy fatal encounters that he was involved okay, in. He somehow was not indicted, arrested, or even a suspect in the murders of Tupac and Biggie. This is surprising because, is as wild. we broke down in great detail in my Diddy Files video, all roads as to why the two rappers died seem to lead to him. Also in 1998, he finally settled a case that he had been battling for seven years. In in 1991, he organized a celebrity charity basketball game where a stampede that occurred hit? that took the lives of the heavy people. Beat? Eight families of the deceased settled wrongful death lawsuits against Mr. Combs in early 1998. Mr. Combs ended up paying around $600,000 of a total of $3 million or so. When you combine what? these major legal wins with him having more success than ever and dating a buzzing superstar, he was probably feeling untouchable, which meant that anyone who came was. at him the wrong way would pay the price. And one man who would pay the price would be Steve Stout, a longtime executive with Interscope Records and manager of the rapper Nas. No Nas way. had recently released a single featuring Puffy called Hate, Hate Me, Me now. now, and when the music video aired on MTV, Puffy was outraged. The video features the crucifixion of Christ with Nazir himself playing the role of Jesus. Diddy was also it's cast Nasir. as one of the criminals on a cross beside Nas. Puffy, who is a devout Catholic, had requested his image on the cross be removed from the cut of the video that was to air nationally. Whether it was an honest mistake or done intentionally is unknown, Holy. but the fact of the matter is the request was ignored and the full video was broadcast across the country. From there, Diddy went to oh. Steve Stout's office with That's several crazy. bodyguards and allegedly attacked Stout by smashing a bottle of champagne over his head. When Puffy was asked about the situation, this was his- Yo, look, I know in movies and shows and shit, they show people smashing bottles on people's heads and it breaks. That's not real, bro. You can smash a bottle over someone's head and it doesn't even break, bro. Oh my God. Respond. Bad rumor going around that either you or your people were involved with beating up a record executive. Oh, yeah. what, what's your side of the story on that? Not them playing oh, the music in the back. I heard that rumor too. I don't even really know where it came from. Either. One cat. month later, in May of 99, Steve he Stout did, reported the assault artist, to bro. the press. I'm scared of him. Everybody is afraid of him. He has a dark history. Stout goes on to explain the attack. He punched me in the face. and then Look, he man. I know y'all can't see it, but that the, b behind that too right there is a Kid Cudi poster. He grabs one of my favorite artists. Me in the head he tried to kill it. Kid Cudi by blowing up his car because he dated Cassie. next minute, I'm down on the floor, and Puffy and his guys are kicking and pounding me. One of them picks up a chair and throws it at me. Then Puffy throws my desk over, and they just walk out like nothing happened. That's Sean Combs crazy. was arrested, then bailed out, but the case never went to trial and was settled out of court. Because there was no lawsuit. No, there was. You know, there was just a, like you said, a payoff. He just you know got paid. Much, uh, how much Steve got paid off? He got paid off well. Millions? You can say that. Yeah, you can you say, say that. that. Puffy seemingly felt he could do whatever he wanted because ultimately he had the money, the power, 
or the connections to make any problem go away. And that's exactly what many people think happened in the infamous 1999 club shooting. The one where Jennifer Lopez saw the entire thing go down. On December 27th, 1999, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez arrived at Manhattan's famous she don't get her ass whooped. Club New York in a limousine. Club New York, two days after Christmas, 45th Street, Manhattan, Times Square. Everybody's outside, fur coats, Benzes, baddest bitches, richest niggas, ball players, gangsters, rappers, <laughs> this dude all in so one spot. Diddy New York. and J Lo arrived with a small crew, including his chauffeur, Wardell Fenderson, his bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones, and his newest bad boy signee, upcoming rapper, Shine. I get inside the club. Pat. I'm not gonna lie, I've never heard of Shine. With a security guard walking to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, this sh lit. J-Lo in the club, this sh lit. I see Puffy lit. and them niggas over there, him and Shy, them niggas just standing on the, on the couches, my wet bottles, doing That's it. True. As Puffy and his crew attempted to leave, they navigated through the crowded man. club. As they walked past the bar, they bumped Beyonce, into man. another crew, led the whole by a man named Aaliyah Matthew is scary, Allen, bro. who goes by the street name Scar. Whoever bumped into Scar they caused him to spill his drink on, on the way his to clothes, the airport, to which his friend named Marcus turned around in a fit of rage she and knew. pushed the first person I think she knew he saw, too. which happened to be Diddy. Puffy says, you know, do you know who I am? And, and uh, this guy Marcus says, yeah, mother we got money too. And he takes a wad of cash and he throws it right at his face. Wow. And it's 50s and 100s and it's just I have heard 50s that album. and 100s, which of course the whole right. bar, you know, it's goes crazy. Yeah, yeah they start yeah. diving on them, you know, trying to get the money. But all I know is he, I saw when he swung and slapped and money was raining through the sky and falling to the floor. Everybody started trying Wait, to Wait, she's the one that did he shot? Run and pick up money and it was just craziness. Oh, you hear? It's so crazy how you can actually get shot in the face and survive. It's actually insane. Like at that point, just I just want to be dead, bro, because I don't want to suffer that pain of a bullet in through my face, bro. Oh my God. Next thing I know, me and this nigga on the floor looking at each other. We, like, oh shit, we, we like, yo. Cause you know, after one shot, you like this. But then you hear more shot, that's when you fall. Now there are conflicting reports as to exactly what happened next, but we do know that several shots were fired from a gun into the club. One of the victims- No, that's actually kind of true. When you hear one shot, you just kind of like, whoa. But if you hear two or more, that's when you start ducking, bro. That's actually so crazy. <laughs> named Natanya Rubin recalls being shot. Like literally walking backwards towards the door, drawing from their hip. I told my friend, I said, oh my God, watch out. As I turned back to look at them, I watched them bow, bow. Both of them fired and the muzzle flash was like pew, pew. I watched them both fire their guns. I watched them. I got hit right here. In my nose, in between my eyes, which means I'm facing directly at you. Just like I'm looking at you, that's exactly how I was looking at him. And I watched him shoot me. Today, Natanya speaks about the situation very calmly, but back when it first happened, she was extremely distraught, seeking justice. I'm not famous. I don't have a publicity machine. I don't have a billion dollars of insurance on my body, or any part of my body for that matter. Oh, I feel, I'm so, oh, this is painful, bro. Does that make me any less valuable? You have a woman who shot in the face, who still has bullet fragments, bullet fragments two inches from her spine. She has two children. She has her own business. What is she to do now? There's an issue of health coverage. I mean, what do you tell two children, 10 and 7? Um, mommy got shot in the face. Another victim, 27-year-old Julius Jones, also oh recalls gosh. being shot. I ain't had no time to duck. It just hit me. Felt, you know, the burn sensation on my shoulder. I just dropped instantly to the floor. The she next thing he remembers out. after the bullet pierced his shoulder. People screaming, running, running from the front of the oh, door. Oh, I could never imagine getting shot, bro. That bullet is hot. Or is the bullet cold? I, I don't ever want to find out, really. To the exit, trying to, you know, 
Get out the way. After the gunfire stopped, Puffy and J-Lo rushed out of the club and were whisked into a vehicle driven by his chauffeur, Wardell Fenderson. The group fled the chaos in a Lincoln Navigator SUV registered to Puffy's Bad Boy Record Company, speeding through 11 red lights while the cops pursued them. As the car was speeding okay, away from the sense. police, a bystander witnessed somebody throw a gun outside of the passenger side of the car. The witness told investigators that he saw a woman's hand fling a gun from the chauffeur-driven Lincoln Navigator. Minding his own business. Yeah. A woman's hand? The Lincoln My Navigator God, it was J-Lo? driving by. He... J-Lo up the pole? <laughs> Get no way, bro. According to him, he sees a light-skinned, slender arm throw this loaded weapon out the window. Okay, and that, that lands oh, on she didn't up the If this was true, it implicates Jennifer Lopez, as that's likely the person they are describing, for discarding a piece of evidence. The Navigator was eventually pulled over by police, and authorities found another firearm with three spent cases in the front seat. Oof. Nobody took credit for the gun. Therefore, all four of them, J-Lo, Diddy, the prison. driver, and the bodyguard, were arrested and taken to the Midtown North Precinct for questioning. We would later find out that the weapon had been reported stolen in Georgia. None of the four occupants of the car had a license for the gun. Diddy, how rich are you at this point that you don't have a, a gun license? Back at the nightclub, Shine was taken away in handcuffs because he also was in possession of a firearm with three spent cases. Scar and his crew were not arrested because they fled the scene. While Diddy and his crew were in the holding cell, allegedly he attempted to bribe his driver, Wardell Fenderson. I'm Puff Daddy, you know? Fenderson quoted Combs as saying in hushed tones, I can't take this gun rap. I'll give you $50,000. According to oh! Fenderson, Shine chimed in. Listen, dog. Oh! You don't have a record. You'll get probation. We can't let P take the gun. You'll be a part of the family. Come oh! Oh my gosh! Nigga, if you want me to go to prison for you... Hold on, bro. If you want me to go to prison for you... I need a lot more than $50,000, bro. What the fuck? Combs then offered him a diamond pinky ring, a gift from J-Lo, as collateral for the promised $50,000. The driver initially did tell police that the gun was his, but he later recanted that statement. There was also a tapped phone nah, call where they suspect Puff had been trying bro. to bribe the driver To go to jail again. and ruin my life with a record? Like oh, nah, I need, I need I need more than 50k. Everyone involved in the situation bailed out of jail. Now you can flip 50k. You can invest it. You can do a lot of things to make that more money. You can you can turn that to a million dollars, absolutely. But I'm gonna need more than 50k to go to jail for you, my nigga. And as you can imagine, the media was in a frenzy. Puffy quickly lawyered up, hiring a dream team of two top defense attorneys, Johnny Cochran and Benjamin Braffman. They held a press conference, which was basically just an official way for Puffy to put out an official statement to proclaim his innocence. Imagine On Sunday evening, I went to Club New York, and under no circumstances whatsoever did I have anything to do with a shooting. From there, his lawyer proceeded to take questions ass, and attempt to clarify what had happened that night. Whatever happened at the club had nothing to do with him and when he went outside and he was whisked into a car in the back of the car with Miss Lopez the gun was found in the front where two other people were, were, were if you or I went into a car and sat in the back seat and a gun was found in the front all cases would be dismissed the reason Mr. Combs case was not dismissed is a simple one because he's black because every time someone lies you all take it as true. His lawyer is trying to convince the press that the gun being in the front seat is this obvious matter of fact that proves Diddy's innocence. When in reality, Diddy's company owned the car and they drove for 11 New York City blocks speeding away from the cops, which is more than enough time for somebody to take the gun from the back seat and move it to the front seat. Yeah, but we're going to deep dive into all the details minutes, of the case in a minute. Minute. Right Come before the now. trial, the media was more focused on Jennifer Lopez since Diddy being involved in a shooting wasn't really all that surprising. Headlines emerged such as her high-risk Roma. Oh my god, I remember I, I, remember I used to... Uh, go to the grocery store or walmart or whatever whenever we go to the checkout line you'd see these magazines just sitting on the shelf <laughs> yo i don't even know if this, they still do that bro i don't really pay attention too much but like damn bro i used to see these this specific like yellow text 
and then the people and then it would have another couple up here another couple down here yo that's so crazy and and her night in hell that's whether me back, or not she had been involved in or knew exactly what happened was a juicy story and everyone wanted answers which is why many people believe that she wore a specifically revealing dress at the 2000s grammy awards to take attention off the incident this award show was less than two months after the shooting and headlines switched from talking about that to talking this is about what she looked like in 2001 this skimpy garment. In fact, her Grammys dress is the reason why Google Images exists today. Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt, said Google users wanted more than just text. This first became apparent after the 2000s Grammy Awards, where Jennifer Lopez wore a green dress that, well, caught the world's attention. At the time, it was the most popular search query we had ever seen, but we had no surefire way of getting users exactly what they wanted. JLo wearing that dress. Google Image Search was born. As we got closer to the trial, David Letterman interviewed Jennifer Lopez on Late Night and asked her about the recent trouble she Google had got in with though. Diddy. He it's was referring same. to the it, nightclub it shooting and JLo made it very clear that she did not want to talk. Trouble they just now. call it Google Images there's some now. trouble now. I, I don't think I need to tell people, but there, there's trouble now. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to go into it, do we? No. And, and you, you can't really say anything about it, can you? No. So there's... I really shouldn't have even brought it up. I don't know why I brought it up. But there is some trouble Miss, now. say some words. Now, has, has, has the trouble uh, affected the uh, relationship? No. The trial for the nightclub shooting case began with jury selection on January 17th, 2001, followed by opening arguments on January 29th, 2001. Not the sketch Interestingly of the enough, we found this New York Post article that claims that JLo testified in front of 23 grand jurors in Manhattan Supreme Court, saying, Look, I danced with him. I had my arms around him. No gun. But I found Cap. countless other sources that report that she never testified but she Cat. would be willing to if she had to. I have told Sean that if he and his lawyers change their minds and require me to testify, I will be there. <laughs> Mind sand. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. To tell the truth. Another <laughs> interesting point in this case is that Shine got separate attorneys and didn't attorneys put a space in between those Puff two had words. his superstar legal team, but Shine, who was just 20 years old with no substantial money, was actually appointed different lawyers. And those two lawyers had previously worked for Diddy. And this is weird because Puff and Shine are essentially defending themselves for the exact same crime, and Shine is signed to Diddy's label, so why would they have separate legal teams? Diddy's defense was simple. He denied everything. He Daisy didn't have a gun. He didn't get into an altercation. He didn't get slapped with a stack of money. He didn't shoot a gun. And he did not try to hide a gun after the fact. Detectives who interviewed 350 people that witnessed the events in the nightclub almost unanimously agree that Diddy and Shine did fire a weapon. The other witnesses That's crazy. that were that did describe what happened. They're not taking none of his bullshit. Say that Sean, was, Sean Combs was the one who who uh who fired, you know, and, and shot these people along with, along with Shine. Additionally, there were metal detectors that everyone in the club were required to go through, which would mean that the intended targets of the bullets, Scar and his crew, would not have had guns on them. The only people mm. who didn't go through the metal detectors is, is Puffy and J-Lo. Right. And uh, I think everyone else. So you're telling me everybody went through a metal detector, except for Diddy and J-Lo. Yet, they're trying to say they weren't the ones shooting. If everybody went through a metal detector except for y'all, and there was guns found on nobody else, or there was no guns found on anybody that went to the, through the metal detector, but there was a shooting that happened, and the only people who didn't go through a metal detector are saying they didn't do it, who do you think is going to believe that, bro? You're talking about you didn't have a gun, you didn't go through the metal detector. That means everyone who went through the metal detector didn't have a gun. Went through. They were the only ones that had guns. Also, if you think about it, if Scar and his crew had guns on them, this situation would have probably been a lot worse because they likely would have started shooting back. But instead, mm -hmm. they fled the scene. And speaking of Scar, conveniently, he was nowhere to be found in the trial. And that's because he was allegedly threatened to disappear. And he, and he said, he goes, look, you know, they were after me. They, they were trying to, you know, get me to disappear anyway. And they were going to pay me at one point he was offered $100,000 to just disappear. This is according That's... to him. They had a meeting set to go get this money. He was going to bring some people with him, 
for his safety, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so he felt fairly comfortable, but he got a call from someone in Puffy's inner circle who he knew from his neighborhood, wherever he knew him, I, I forget exactly, but who told him, uh, don't go to pick up that money. You will, you will never see it, and that'll, and that'll be it for you. They, they're going to kill you. Despite all That's of the wild. evidence that seemingly was stacked up against Puffy, one witness was somehow able to exonerate him entirely. The witness, Sharice Myers, was a bouncer at the club. She claimed that when shots rang out, she fell on top of Puffy during the shooting and that she did not feel a gun on him. This yeah. single testimony somehow negated all of the witnesses, all of the testimonies and detective reports and the metal detectors and everything that made Puffy look guilty. That's How? so crazy. We don't know. Additionally, Sharice testified that Shine was the one who shot the gun. And for some reason, Shine's lawyers admitted that he shot the gun, but in self-defense. So Puffy's defense strategy was deny everything, and Shine's defense strategy was, oh yeah, I did shoot the gun, but I was defending myself. It was at this point that Shine realized his attorneys, which were appointed to him by Puffy, were not acting in his best interest. No, they were but not. At the point where you oh, know, he okay. called the witnesses. Puffy gave you, di bro. If P Diddy gave you lawyers, you're you're cooked, bro. If those lawyers were given to you by P fucking Diddy, and P Diddy is the one who's guilty, you're cooked. What the fuck, yo? Is you know to do me dirty, then you understand that you know. Well, man, if these guys is working for him. Oh, because I went to the judge like three times complaining about inefficiency with my lawyers because they was just dumbing out. Like right. witnesses be on the stand, they would ask them two questions that didn't make sense and then sit down. It's obvious that they were selling me. You understand? In order to appease him. You know, there was a dual loyalty there. All fingers were pointed at Puff. But because of Sharice Meyer's testimony and Shine's lawyers essentially backing up her story, the jury felt this case was solved, that Shine was guilty and Puffy was innocent. Sean Combs was acquitted of all charges, and Shine was found guilty of five other charges, including assault in the first degree, reckless endangerment, and criminal possession of a weapon. Justice Charles Solomon sentenced Barrow to 10 years for first degree assault. I also find it interesting that Shine's lawyers, who literally... That's why I said earlier, if you want me to go to prison for you, I'ma need more than 50 fucking K. Hell no. They just lost their case and- I want you to pay me some millions before I get out of, or before I go into jail. And I want it put into an account that you can access so that when I get out, I have those millions. Cause no fucking way. No, their client is going to jail. Walk up to the press stand smiling, looking like they won. What about Shine? His spirits, he's of course disappointed with. There's just something odd about how he says, what about Shine while smiling? It's like, what do you mean, what about Shine? You just lost the case. He's going to jail. Why are you smiling? And then he looks at his partner, and his partner is a lot more serious, and he immediately tucks that smile away and acts That's very serious. Oh my god, it's the evil ass world we live in, bro. Oh my god, these lawyers are in Diddy's pocket, bro. These lawyers are in Diddy's pocket, and they made you go to jail, bro. Oh, that's crazy. Like he was smiling because the job actually was done the right way. But exactly. Hey, what do I know? There are theories that Puffy paid exactly. the jurors, or maybe he bribed the judge, or he paid Sharice Myers to strengthen his case, but none of them really have much substantial evidence. However, it does kind of seem that Shine was the fall guy. Shine said that Diddy admitted this many years <laughs> later. You know, Puffy joke. apologized. He did apologize to me for that. You know, when we met in Paris. And, you know, he did say, you know, he could have handled it better. I think that's why I never heard of Shine, because the dude went to prison before you know, his career really lawyers, started. You know, to throw me under the bus. Uh, oh. and, and that's exactly what, you know, Benjamin Brothman uh, and, and, and Johnny Cochran and, and the entire uh, Dream Team, that was their position. But Diddy has always denied that. 
I did not force anybody or tell anybody to say anything that 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 would damage or hurt Shine's case. I just wouldn't do that. that. That would not be my intent whatsoever. Now there is no doubt that Shine did commit a horrible crime. Such like you can't just fire liar. a gun into a club where there's tons of people around. But it really seems like he was not the only one who should have been found guilty. And throughout the years, there was only one person who never shared their side of the story. J -Lo. And that was Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. J-Lo was right there the entire night. She arrived with Puffy. She was in the club with him. She was right there when they had the scuffle. She was in the getaway vehicle where a gun was discarded. And, ever and she was even in the holding much. cell where there was allegedly a bribe that happened. She also continued to date Puffy before and during the trial. If anyone knows exactly how this all went down, it's, it's her. But after this trial concluded, their relationship did not last much longer. In an interview with Rolling Stone, J-Lo recalls, He said to me many times, I want a divorce. Which keep in mind, they were never married. I'll be away so much or he'll be- <laughs> What? <laughs> I want a divorce. Bitch, we not even- <laughs> Nigga, we not even fucking married. What do you mean you want a divorce? <laughs> He can't get away, whatever, but he'll say, so where do I send the papers? Lopez affirms that all is well, but they have no plans to marry. She goes on to detail their vastly different lifestyle preferences. Puff loves to go out, she says. He's been a going out to clubs person all his life, doing his thing. I've always been a homebody, so we switch off what we do when we're together. I don't really like to talk about us because I don't feel like it's anybody's business. It's a separate thing. He's an artist, I'm an artist, we have two separate careers. There are some things you have to keep sacred and private, she says quietly, breaking eye contact as she does whenever Puffy is brought up in a non-professional capacity. That's such an interesting detail, like Hold whenever on, what? There are some things you have to keep sacred and private, she says quietly breaking eye contact as she does whenever Puffy is brought up in a non- Puffy oh. is brought up in a non-professional capacity. That's such an interesting detail, like why did the writer write that specifically? She because writers always are telling you something. I'm not even gonna lie to you, writers always write what they want you to see or want, want you to read and they put that in there for a specific reason always breaks eye contact they knew something in exactly. this business your soul is so public and open we, we, me and patrick are on the same wavelength right now bro <laughs> and out there for everybody there is no privacy there really isn't. At the end of the day, you really have to fight to keep certain things sacred so that they survive. And sometimes they don't. And that's life. But you try. Most people look at JLo's response as completely normal. Even celebrities deserve privacy, and it's not weird to think they don't want to spill out every single detail about their personal lives. No. However, due to the suspicious acquittal of Diddy in the shooting, and the nature of his recent RICO charges, mm -hmm. some look at her demand for privacy as a strategic way to separate herself from his sins. Was she actually a homebody? I mean, we do have plenty of photos of her at the Diddy parties, especially some where she appears to be cozied up in the bed with a- <laughs> That picture of Aaliyah is sickening, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you, that picture of Aaliyah is sickening. Other stars, perhaps a prelude to the freak-offs. That I, at that time- I said was, that earlier, I said, why does Jennifer Lopez look like deeply. she's naked? Uh, or she for, like that's like a, that's like a, and, um, a weird picture. I said that at the beginning. Know, just, I said that's such a weird picture. Have the same kind of ideals about life and family and stuff like that, and just wasn't a good relationship for me. It didn't have so much to do with him as it had to do with me. I at really the time. hope that part. Is I not had muted. to learn um, in the recording to care about myself a little bit more and put up certain boundaries of what I would accept and wouldn't accept because. Um, Really, he was just being himself. He wasn't doing anything wrong, and he felt like he loved me very much, and Cat. I know he did, and I, I felt like the same way. So if I was unhappy in some way, then I was the one who had to do something. Not him, he was doing everything he wanted to do. Just a few months after the trial, the couple oh, quietly shit. went their separate ways. The relationship only lasted 18 months. But Diddy says almost nothing See, but positive like things about Jennifer. To in a 2001 bro, she... interview, he said that he was still in love with his ex, Kim Porter. I got caught up in the hype a little bit. You know, Jennifer, she's definitely a bad chick, but I was still in love with Kim, you know what I'm saying? 
So I couldn't marry Jennifer if I was still in love with Kim. A couple years later, JLo revealed that their breakup was actually because Puffy had cheated on her. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I was with someone who wasn't faithful, JLo tells Vibe magazine. I was in this relationship with Puff where I was totally crying, crazy, and going nuts. It really took my whole life in a tailspin. I never caught him, but I just knew. He'd say he was going to a club for a couple of hours and then never come back that night. Puffy's longtime bodyguard, Gene Deal, also recalls a time where he cheated on JLo immediately after she threw him a massive party for his birthday. Then we came back, what's his name? Slam has set it up because Jennifer went upstairs. And Puff said, yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through the door. And I wanted to say it was Korean, but I'm not sure it was her. And while Jennifer was upstairs, he was down there getting a fellatio from her. Did she wow. ever find out? She know now. Now this is not she as popular now. of a theory because <laughs> She knows now. She know now is crazy, bro. <laughs> oh my god. It's not that sexy, but there is a chance that Diddy was an entirely different person towards JLo. If you watch my Diddy Files video, then you know that when it comes to his personal relationships, he's quite literally a monster. I mean, literally, there's video of him Cassie. beating his girlfriend. But if we speculate that his relationship with JLo was just a business transaction, then Poor maybe Cassie. he treated her better than his other partners. When you was around Diddy, did you ever see him pit his hands on Jennifer Lopez? Well, he didn't do any violence to Mrs. JLo. That's why I didn't see any violence. It's a different breed, bro. He wasn't going to risk himself like that. And plus, a lot of people didn't like him. JLo mother didn't like him. Benny Medina didn't like him. He, if he would have ever touched Miss Lopez in any kind of aggressive way, she would have said something. Man, listen to me. Career the whole been Bronx would have been on Puff. It's a different class. It's, it, you know, he knew that she was an actress, she was a singer. He did put her on a pedestal, but he still was seeing Kim. So I don't I don't think that she had those experiences. Mm. People only do what you let them do. If he would have did that to her, he would only have one time. You see, when he ran out the club and left her after that shooting at Shine, <laughs> she ain't want to be with him up no more. <laughs> It seems yes. like JLo has That's a great deal true. of deniability as far as her involvement and or knowledge of Diddy's crimes. He could have been a totally different person towards her, or he was cheating on her, which we can assume would mean that he was constantly lying to her. Or maybe the relationship was strictly business and it was all fake so they didn't even mm. know each other that well. Or all of the above. Those who still look at JLo suspiciously believe that she knew about his sins and purposely turned a blind eye since he was helping her music career immensely or that she was actually involved in the cover-up of the nightclub shooting, or at the very least, she knows the real story and the reason she is not speaking out against him today is because she is also guilty. I mean, this clip of her basically wishing death on Diddy is very telling. You look in the ocean, you see two people floating. Oh, shit. You can only pull up one because that's how much room you have on your raft. Mm. You look in the ocean, you see Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> And you see Diddy. Why he do this? <laughs> Why big boy do this shit? <laughs> I also find this clip of Jay's mom in 2015 very interesting. I was telling you that I could always see you getting back with Puffy in a little way. <laughs> I remember you saying yes. that. Yes. Or in my mind. Look at that. Look at Or in my mind. I don't think I've ever seen a more seriously concerned face. Her mom is not playing around. She demanded that JLo stop talking. The reason why all this matters is because it's very possible Damn. that today JLo is in contact with federal investigators about the 1999 club shooting. She could Damn. plead the fifth, she could say that she doesn't remember, or she could testify against him and actually help put him in jail. And since Diddy is currently being charged with Rico, the nightclub shooting can still be added to his charge charges as long as they can prove that this incident is a part of a pattern of repetitive criminal behavior. Yikes. In the aftermath of that, Slap with they the have Rico. witnesses that say he bragged about um, intimidating witnesses, uh, uh, paying off jurors. 
certainly when you have that kind of stuff, if you go back and you find that juror that was paid off or jurors, multiple, that may have been paid off, um, certainly that gives you the impetus to kind of come forward and refresh those charges on a federal case. So now it's JLo's move. Is she going to stay silent, plead the this fifth, and pretend like she doesn't remember anything? Or will she be a part of the inevitable takedown and imprisonment of Sean Diddy Combs? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hold on, bro. That's actually kind of fucking wild, bro. JLo has the power to put Diddy in jail, bro. But at the same time, if she does, she might also put herself in jail. That's the issue, bro. Or she might get probation or something, bro. That's kind of scary, bro.